Alright, so we're going to do some bowl carving today, and um, besides just getting a little bit of that on video in case anybody's interested in looking um, for some footage, um, th this is also kind of a review and uh, demonstration of uh, this ads that I got, um, and this is from Bulgaria, uh, you can get them off, get them off of eBay, um, I'll, I'll put the link in the description, um, the fellow is, uh, his screen name is Mapsist, but uh, again, look at look in the description. Uh, this was a, a, an incredible deal, um, and uh, you know, this is for way... Okay, so here's uh, some pictures of the ads right when I got it. Um, you know, it's a little scuffed up now, uh, definitely used it some, and also from buffing and, and sharpening it a little bit after uses, uh, some of the black stuff's been rubbed off. Uh, if you want to leave most of that black stuff on there, it'll protect uh, the steel, which is um, a, a carbon steel, so um, which is good. But the black stuff will protect uh, a lot of it from rusting, so it makes gives it a nice look. Uh, and then this is um, also a little bearded hatchet that I got. It's got ads on the back. Uh, the grind that came on it was it's good. It's a regular axe grind, um, but I prefer like a single bevel, uh, like carving axe especially for that size so I don't use it a whole lot I, I, the back of it's actually really nice uh, I wasn't really sure about it but um that that proved to be kind of useful I'll definitely be using that um as in the ads itself it's kind of a smaller you know detail thing but uh you know definitely definitely useful in a lot of areas there um so I'm glad I got that uh, mostly you're going to be seeing uh the ads uh and here I am splitting the log um, not really sure what kind of wood this is. I picked it up in Prospect. I made some other bowls and spoons out of it. And it's pretty good. So, um, really have no idea. It's maybe something close to uh, in the hickory family. It's not hickory, um, but it's it's there's there's a lot of properties like it, and there's a lot of trees around in my area that are in kind of that family horse chestnut and these other things that are not quite as uh, stringy and strong as hickory but um, have nice you know hardwood qualities and this stuff has nice after it gets some oil on it, it has a nice color on the inside you can see it that line down the center is the pith and I was trying to get some of that out you can also see that it's a little bit uh, not completely straight grain it curves a little bit that's fine um, for me you know I'll, I'll carve uh, pieces of wood that are even less straight than that so this is actually the footage is from two different bowls that I carved because on the first one I saw the footage and I'd screwed up. So um, if if I'm changing clothes and edits, you know that's that's because of that. And also the bowl might change a little bit. There's two bowls, basically the same. Anyway, that that's uh, red stuff is not blood. Uh, I, it's some house paint that I'll use on wood that's not completely dry yet. Um, I keep it from cracking. House paint's a cheap way to to do that, <clears throat> nice and thick, and. Um, you can see right here, uh, this is really all I needed to show as far as the review and everything of this ads. Um, it's it's just a monster in this wood. I'm really happy with it. Um, removing this amount of wood so fast is just, uh, just it's so nice for me. Um, after after struggling with some crappier ads is that we're at higher prices, uh, mind you. And um, so really happy with this. Um, even though I do go carve with it a, a lot more deeper into the bowl, this is the main part that you need the ads for. You can kind of do everything else with you know some other hand tools, uh, but it's kind of getting that start of the main chunks of wood out that are the hardest to do. And also, you notice I'm um, I'm just kind of holding this thing the whole time. Um, the, a lot of other styles that they'll put it in a horse, um, you know the you only have to do the, the piece upside down, but um, to have a natural edge on the bowl, which what I mean by that is uh, that you'd carve it, basically turn that piece of wood uh, the other way and carve on the curved side, and that gives it a fun edge. But um, I I've done that before, and I just didn't feel the need to on this one. And I, I like carving by hand, just kind of holding it and then working with it. It makes it a little bit clumsier, but um, I don't I don't know. I I just like it more like that. <clears throat> you know, watch your thumb though. In general, the ads is is more safe than an axe, um, just the way that it's set up. Um, you still have to watch yourself. Certainly with this one, it could definitely take off a finger. And um, you can see here, I'm just kind of working into it. I've not done a whole lot of car <clears throat> bull carving, especially ads work because of the, my ads problem. Um, so 
Um, I'm just kind of getting used to this. But you can see how successful it is even without me having a real great mastery of the tool. There I'm bopping on its head to get a little tighter. It's because I, my swings aren't quite, you know, down yet. So uh, when you when you carve with an adz, you have to carve in a a curve uh, so that the blade hits uh, and has power behind the way that it's aiming. So it, unlike an, an axe, which is pointing the way that you're uh, striking it, the adz is down. So you have to have like a, an arc in it. And if like on this one, the way they're handled, um, it'll it'll pop the adz head down a little bit if I hit it wrong, and um, so that's why I'm tightening up a little bit. Now that's not like an unsafe thing or anything. I really like the handling on this. Um, and so I just kind of pop it every once in a while if I feel like it may be getting loose. Um, it'll be loose for a little bit for a few hits before it starts to slide down uh, because there is quite a bit of um, tension up there. But you don't, you know, we want it to be tight to get a solid hit <clears throat> for that. The power of it to transfer into the wood instead of come back into the handle. Uh, okay, so just on uh, bowl carving in general, uh, whether you're using the an ads or something else that's kind of doing the rough work, um, you want to do uh, most of it, most of the bowl, the inside of it, um, before you do the outside. And this is just kind of uh, because. Like say if you carved it to the exact um, way you wanted it and then you did the outside, you wouldn't have a whole lot of leeway with um, if you screwed up. Or it's also that the the bowl itself will not be as strong um, when you're, you know, because I'll, I'll use an axe to carve off these edges you'll see later. Um, and those axes will split a bowl if it's at its normal like thinness. So I kind of get close and... Um, you know get get kind of like a general idea and then I go to the back and then do kind of the major rough out there and then I'll flip it kind of back and forth um, this one went pretty fast there wasn't a whole lot of back and forth um, so it turned out pretty good but I know a lot in my beginning ones it, it was um, much more trial and error especially after I broke some you know it's just very hard to be working on something like this for a while and and then have it crack you know or have it ruined so um, these start to be much more careful. There you can see my very proficient with my hands. Uh, dropped it there. Another interesting thing about this ads that I really like is um, it has a little place on the, the back of it to mallet. You'll see me here doing that. You can't really see a lot of wood being removed. I'm just kind of uh, making a mark with it and then going back in with it. Um, it it's not real necessary because it's so heavy it's got that heft that you can um you know you just the, the mallet hitting it with a mallet is uh, much less forcible but it, it gives you much more control because you can place the ads exactly where you want it and then pop it in there the other thing is, is that uh when you swing it because it kind of has this arc to make it work uh that you're limited to that that arc and like say on this one i wanted the sweep to go a little bit deeper and so the mallet allowed me to drive it straight down into it exactly where I wanted the curve to start going and then I go back to swinging the ads um, and flattening smoothing that out a little bit um, so I really like that it's really interesting I don't, I don't think it's on um, hardly any other ads is at all even the $300 ones so um, really enjoyed that you do want it to be um, a bowl you know um, you can get into kind of doing two angular sides that meet in the middle um, and even if you don't want it to be you know fully curved um, right at the bottom it does need to be a bowl um, or else it's going to be hard to get it um, to smooth out without sanding um, and not, you know on your first project you may need to to do some sanding um, because that's the main thing at the end if you do want to eat out of it that um, there's not like uh, little slivers or crevices um, where food could get stuck or whatever um, where that would be hard to wash so you want it to be basically completely smooth um, I do leave uh, carving marks as you'll see in the end because uh, I like you know the, to leave, leave it looking handmade um, but it, there's that certain kind of um, crevice that wood will leave um, you know where it's kind of splintered up um, from it not being completely smoothed down 
going downhill on both sides. And uh, that's the stuff you want to get rid of. And what really helps is to kind of imagine it at the bottom. Even, again, if it's not completely shaped like a U, you know, or bowl-shaped, circle shape, um, that at the bottom that it does go flat for at least a very small, you know, even imperceptible moment there. Um, and that's how you can get the grains to meet up. Otherwise, it's just going to keep running into each other. Uh, and there's going to be a little lift up of wood on one of the sides. So you think about it going completely, that curve at the bottom going completely flat before it meets the other side. And if your tools are sharp, you can do a side cut, uh, so, you know, so that you don't have to keep going down from each side, sweeping into the other, trying to get the perfect level of grain. Uh, but a lot of times the side cuts coming from the side, um, it's not going to be as smooth. And maybe some of the woods don't take it as well. But if your tools are sharp, you might be able to get away with some of it. Well, you can see here that I'm just kind of doing a little more smaller cuts, just kind of trying to detail out the, the exact shape that I want. Um, and you can see at different points that I kind of go to different uh, places on the handle, you know, going further down for more leverage and then going a little further up for more detail. Um, and I may actually make another handle for this ad so it's a little shorter um, to, get, to get a little bit of better detail balance uh, but I really love the long handle and I haven't seen that in other ads so uh, I'm really happy with that and and with the way they do handle it that it, it is you can take it out without destroying the, the handle um, but I do have the option of having uh, another handle easily put on there um, you can see here I've kind of gotten some of the bowl stuff so now I'm going back to the the edge not just to get the paint off but um, there's usually going to be something rough from the split or your cut uh, and I'm also just because it was a little bit curved I'm flattening it out completely now um, and you do that at, you know after you do the bowl because there's much less material to flatten out there's only a few inches on each side Okay, so now we've really got the uh, the shape down. We've got the bowl basically what we want it, uh, minus you know about half an inch on the inside. We've got it flattened out, so we're going to start working on the outside here. And um, I, you know, still have bark on this for one, so we can start taking that off. And I leave a lot of the bark on because um, really it's can be aggravating to to take it off sometimes on this wood specifically. It was. Um, so in your carving, you're probably going to take it off anyway. And uh, with a bark like this that sticks on, um, you're maybe going to be taking off some of the wood. And, you know, there's no reason to be retracing the whole log carving it if you're just going to be carving all that wood away anyway. Um, so uh, here I'm doing the bottom here. Um, you know, you want to try to definitely get a little flat bottom part on there so it'll, it won't rock too much. We're going to have stuff in it. And uh, I'll hit that with a, a plane later. Um, but this is another area here where why you don't want the inside of the bowl to go necessarily as deep as uh, you think it's going to be in the end. You want a little bit of safety area. And you'll go back in with you know your hand tools uh, to make those the final few uh, millimeters of adjustment um, you know with much more control on exactly how thick in the shape of, of what the bottom of that bowl and outside is going to be. You want to keep feeling it throughout, uh, you know, to see uh, that it's kind of the the right thickness and that you're not getting too thin and you want the, the shape that you want. Part of carving with a hatchet and holding it uh, with your hand, holding the wood with your hand, is um, being able to transfer the force of the swing of the axe or hatchet into the wood instead of the wood bouncing all over the place um, or the, the hatchet bouncing off. And you can see there I hold it straight, flat, and then I start to tilt it up. And the wood may move a little bit afterwards, but it's not a whole lot. For the most part, the, the force is being transferred straight into the wood. And uh, you'll feel that when you start to carve. See, there's another example of me switching over to the other bowl. Um, and yeah, I have quite a few hatchets. Most These other, these other two hatchets that aren't the eBay one um, that I got with this ads, uh, they're old plum hatchets that I've just had time to work on their bevel. Um, this one's the lighter one, the other one's heavier. I think the other one's older. I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but um, 
This one's kind of more of like the detail. This one's got a very flat, fine edge on it. Um, but that the the one I got from Mapsys, the eBay one, was because you can see it worked very well. Um, I ground a little bit of the edge for the second bowl, and that's what you were seeing there. So you can see when I choke up like that, uh, it's more detail oriented, and also I arc the uh, the swing more. You want to swing it, really let the handle fly, uh, and then I'll kind of go back, choke back on the handle. And uh, to get more power out of it, literally let the head swing instead of the back of the handle. And you know how much you do either one of those is kind of up to you, your comfort level. Um, you do have to watch out when I do choke up on it um, and get my hand on there. Sometimes I'll put my finger all the way on to hatch it. But you do have to watch out with some of the stringier woods uh, because it'll drive shafts into your fingernail. The, the splinters that you're you're taking off will go to the outside and go straight into your fingernails. And this recording in that bowl there is the one that you'll you'll see in the end. It's the first one I did, so it was the one that dried out uh, quicker. Uh, so I was able to use it and uh, put a finish on it. Um, I I use um, different methods sometimes to help um, a wood that's not already dry from splitting because you'll have that problem. Especially if you're using a really fresh wood. This is kind of in between, so you know you don't want to take the chance. Even a wood that's been inside, if it's a thick piece and it gets cut up, um, it may have had some moisture in there uh, or maybe just was not exactly what the ambient kind of moisture level was. Um, so you always want to be careful with that. So, But what you do though is um, there's two ways. There's kind of the old school way, which is um, you boil it in salt water. And uh, you may want to look that up on how much salt and all that. And I've I've done some that the piece didn't exactly all the way fit in the the pot that I had, uh, maybe on like a large spoon, so the steam was enough. Um, but I I think they say that you do it until it uh, doesn't float anymore, and but it's sometimes hard to tell if it's not big enough to sink or whatever. So um, you, know, you just kind of boil it for a good while. The the water will turn kind of brown, even on a lighter wood. Um, the problem with that though is that it, it leaves the bowl salty and uh, you know if you're gonna eat out of it you can deal with it and it'll wash away but um, it's you know infused with salt so there's another method which is um, you use like an alcohol um, I just use like a high percentage rubbing alcohol and um, the way I read it was that you soak it in the alcohol you just kind of pour it on there and then you put it in a paper bag which kind of um, the paper bag holds in some of the moisture but not all of it I generally don't have paper bags. I don't, we just don't get them shopping. Uh, I just have the plastic ones, so I'll use those. But what I do is that I seal it for the first day, I wrap it up, and then the second day I'll, I'll kind of leave it more open um, and then kind of just let it slowly start to get to different uh, exposure levels. Um, and that seems to work out pretty good. It'll smell like alcohol right at first, but it, it uh, all evaporates, and I can eat from it much sooner with that method. So you can see that I'm leaving some uh, handles kind of on there. And I do bowl turning, lathe work. And so when I do work carving by hand, I really want to take advantage of it. You know, make an oval bowl and I'll have stuff on there that I can't do on the lathe, like some handles like this. They'll get a lot smaller, but um, they're nice. I mean, if you're holding your bowl of rice um, or wh whatever is in your bowl, um, you know, it's a nice place to put your thumb. All right, so here I'll try to give you a little bit of um, kind of where I start to go in with the finer tools. Um, again, I think people that are better, I've seen people carve better with an ad, so I imagine I'll get better with it um, so that I can I feel more comfortable doing the, the finer work with it. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I'll use a gouge, um, use a mallet at first for some of it, and then start to go in when it's smaller, um, smaller pieces of wood I need to remove um, then you know just do it by hand and uh, this is a big old gouge to have you certainly don't have to use one this big but it is nice because it's it's if it's the right contour of the bowl or close to it um, you know it's, it's much easier to get that shape down and you can see this is a bit clumsy because I'm not holding it with anything but um, enough downward pressure can uh, keep it from flying off the block there and then I do a little bit of um, without the the mallet, a little bit of hand strokes there. Um, it's hard with the mallet to 
it makes these little lines like every hit it kind of like does this little jump so you get these kind of like little marks in it i've seen guys do mallet carving without them but I'm, i haven't really gotten that point yet especially when i hit it really hard so i kind of do some strokes with the the hand and so since i've gotten that basically the way i want it on the inside pretty close i'm going back to the outside to do a little more detail work um here's one instance where um the back of that uh axe uh little bearded axe from ebay really worked well um that was just kind of one of the times i was messing with it um at, since i've done that bowl um i actually was uh, started using it more once i started getting used to it uh and then here i'm uh, hitting it with the plane there i flatten the bottom and i got to get my really thin uh hatchet out um I really want everything to be accurate. Again, on the, that eBay hatchet will be fine. I just I need to work on it more, get more flat. It's still it's it's a little bit heavy. It's got some nice heft in it, so it it'll probably be like in my in between uh, hatchet on the carving, because this is my lightest plum with the thinnest head, and um, the other plums really hefty. So um, this that one will be kind of the in between probably, and. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of just getting the shape on the sides here. The other, this other thing about the handles is that it gives you more leeway to, you know, uh, crack on the sides here. Um, if you didn't have those, these these strikes are very dangerous for the bull. And this is one of the reasons why you don't want to have it, you know, as thin as it's going to be in the end, is because um, this part right here, I've cracked a few spoons uh, going to this part, uh, you know, going back to it too late. And then hitting it with a hatchet like this and the force on it crack the bowl. Uh, but with this, there's enough meat on there that I don't really have to worry about it. And uh, if I was not as confident with my hatchet carving skills, I would, you know, I would be doing this with some hand tools or using a mallet. But I've I've carved um, over a hundred spoons, and I do some carving, some pre-carving on some of my regular wood carvings, like figurative stuff, wood spirits. So I'm just slowly taking in the sides, taking my time a little more. Pretty choked up on the handle there. I did um, had cut my thumb a bit on another project. As you can see, it's pretty bandaged up. One of the reasons for that is, is it's just not so it wouldn't get dirty, but that um, it'll open up and it'll smear blood on your carvings, and the blood gets deep, and it's hard to get it off. And no, I didn't have any band-aids, so I have a big old silly paper towel wrapped up on there. It's really not that bad of a cut, I promise. So the bowl is like pretty much there. It really just needs some um, some kind of uh, extra finesse and uh, shaping. And you know, I'll I'll do a little bit more hatchet carving on this, and then. Um, you know, basically go in with some hand tools, uh, some smaller gouges than you saw before, and um, and really just keep feeling it with a, a bare hand and feeling the thickness all over, and uh, just with the outside and also on the inside, uh, make sure that everything's really smooth and there's no crevices for food to go into. Um, just on bowls in general, um, you guys can see that this is actually a pretty uh, steep cornered bowl and um, it's you know the tools work fine um, it adds is, is not uh, necessarily at a really steep angle it's not curved um, and the gouge that I was using is, is not a curved gouge as a sweep but what I mean is um, in chisels and gouges they'll call them straight or bent and um, the bent ones can get it at uh, some steeper places um, and they're really not necessary for a bowl and spoon carving a lot of people call them um, gouges online uh, spoon gouges but I think it's more the shape of the gouge and what it's actually for um, basically the how deep your tools can go what kind of curve they can make it depends on the shape of your bevel on the tool like a, a steeper uh, bevel will you can get deeper <clears throat> and uh, you can cut it as like a steeper angle and um, it's also that it's how it's the ratio of how deep the bowl is of the bowl or a spoon bowl um, how deep it is to how wide it is okay so you could make a you know maybe a foot deep bowl 
if it was wide enough for your tool to get the angle to for it to be efficient to cut the gouges don't in belt and chisels don't cut at um at a straight um angle they're they're they cut at the angle of their bevel basically um or it's a little bit of leeway it's a little bit around that but <clears throat> That's why if you make it steeper, it can grab deeper. But, um, you know, a lot of people think that they need, like, a specialized curved gouge or something to get in to make bowls. I thought so. I bought some tools and then um, didn't understand it. Like, they they don't even work until you have a, a, a bold area where it'll put leverage on it so that it can... Never mind. It's, it's a little bit another story. But you only need straight gouges and, and chisels to do this kind of stuff. Um, and this is a good example of, of a pretty pretty deep bowl but you do need to be mindful of the limits of your tools um, because sometimes when you're trying to um, especially on the inside when you're trying to make it perfect and have the grains line up and have it smooth um, you don't want to overextend past the limits of your tools making a fine cut uh, you don't want to make the the curve too uh, steep so that it can't get in there to make the final cuts Okay, so there's the bowl there, and uh, it's basically done now. Uh, just needs some kind of final touches, uh, some of the edges to be smoothed out. Um, here I'm just kind of touching up the outside and making sure all of the little inner bark places are gone. Um, and like on, on the inside here, because we had done a curved bowl and then a flat surface, it made sharp edges. So. That's what I'm doing right there is I'm just kind of taking off that little sharp edge and um, not a whole lot but just enough so that it's it's uh, has a nice feel to it people okay so here's our finished product um, you guys saw most of the the sculpting there was two bowls uh, but <clears throat> anyway basically after uh, doing a little bit of finishing touches basically coming inside and uh, you know getting any um, super jagged spots. I leave um, leave a lot of the carving marks. I like it. I like the handmade look. Um, but you want to get out in any places where food might get stuck. Uh, you know, places where there's um, you know really <clears throat> like overlapping wood. Or there's tight spots or anything. So you just want to get it uh, nice and clean. Uh, bumps are okay, but uh, not crevices. So anyway, um, then. Uh, use an oil, a food safe oil that will cure. You can use walnut oils, it's one of the better ones, but if anybody uh, that you know is uh, you know, allergic to nuts, uh, then you, you don't want to use that. Um, basically, uh, you go get butcher block oil is what they sell in most of the stores. Uh, there's a few different guys that make it, um, and it's a you know food grade, uh, like um, some sort of mineral oil, I'm not sure, but anyway, it cures, which is the point. You don't want to use an olive oil or any other kind of oil. Uh, you need an oil that'll soak in there and that'll cure. Because uh, if it doesn't, like most with most oils, um, like for instance, olive oil, you know, it'll go in there and it'll um, it'll just stay liquid. So it'll it'll putrefy, it'll rot the wood, and it'll be gross. And it won't won't protect it. Most importantly, because uh, you do want. Um, you don't want you know your liquids and stuff to to get in too deep. Uh, you're gonna be able to wash them. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed that. No, I did.